Well, thank you so much for having me. And I'd like to welcome all of our international teachers and guests. We have such a wide variety of uh, countries that are represented. And I am delighted to be working with all of you. Some of you might be uh, Kahoot experts already. You have used Kahoot in your classroom for a couple of years. Some of you might be new. If you are new to Kahoot, just type in the chat there, just say new, so that I know how many people are going to be using Kahoot or seeing it for the first time, maybe. Oh, I see a couple of newbies. That is wonderful. And if you are not new, that's okay, because there are some brand new features which I will be sharing with you. And more importantly, I will be sharing some tips with you on how to set up a Kahoot and make it a little bit more effective uh, in your classroom. While people are joining in, we were going to have the screen uh, with all the Kahoot instructions for you to sign up. But Kahoot, as you know, it was so excited to move on to the next slide that it actually moved past that stage. So if you would like the link to join, this is the number. I will post it in the chat. The PIN number is this number over here. You can chat, uh, you can join at any time in the game, but I have a little secret to tell you, and that is we have some prizes to give away at the end of the session. So you do want to join this Kahoot, because even though it's going to be an educational Kahoot, and I'm going to be explaining and demonstrating things, there will be Kahoot questions within it. And if you sign up, you could win some prizes. And I know that it doesn't matter where in the world you are, they will send the prizes to you. And what you'll have to do at the end is if you are placed first, second, or third, you need to get a photograph of a screenshot of your name when you sign in and prove that it actually is you. And you'll be emailing that to Isabella and I'll give you all the details at the end of the quiz. All right, so we are going to get started. Um, for oh, I see that some people are saying that their friends did not receive a link to attend the webinar. So maybe um, Isabella can send you some information you can share with them. They are still welcome to join. Um, it'll take a couple of slides before we actually start getting into the quiz questions, but uh, I think we should get started. And I'm going to find my quiz over here. It is indeed over here. And let me share my screen, make sure I share it with sound. Right. And what you will notice is that the first slide is not actually a regular quiz question. It is just a slide to say that this is going to be an opportunity for you to learn how to level up your virtual learning with Kahoot. And my contact details are on the bottom. If you want to copy those details down, maybe take a screenshot or a photo, and that way you can stay in touch. I'm always happy to give you tips and ideas and suggestions um, throughout the year whenever you need them. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next slide. And one of the most incredible features that I have been begging for, you have been begging for, many people have been begging for, and that is the single screen feature. What does that mean? Well, basically, in the old days, when you used to play Kahoot, the screen that you were taking part in in the classroom would have the questions and the devices would be your remote control and you would touch one of the four answers to input your response. Now, the questions appear on the screen and on the device as well. And that means, for example, if you are streaming your Kahoot quiz live on Facebook or YouTube, then students who can't actually see the video but have signed in will still be able to see the questions and the answers. And that is an incredible feature and I know what you're going to be asking. So how, how do we make that work in the Kahoot? And that brings me on to our next slide. If you go into your Kahoot and you click on play, then you click on teach. And then, of course, you go to the settings over here and where it says show questions and answers on the player's device, you switch that on. And then you will see what I mean, because when we play today, you will actually see the questions and the answers on your device or on your uh, screen that you are playing with. Right. 
Let's go on to the next one. One of the very cool things that I like about this is you'll notice that we're not playing a Kahoot. I'm doing a presentation. I am making use of slides. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing a Kahoot, I'm doing a presentation with Kahoot questions in between. And I think that is one of the most incredible ways to make your presentations come alive because they become interactive. And of course, when it comes to slides, what you can do is you can create an actual slideshow in PowerPoint, whatever it is, and you can import the whole PowerPoint. And then obviously just move the slides around and adjust them and put them into the right order. And then of course, we have challenge mode. And for me, challenge mode is a very cool feature. So let's pretend you want to give your students a quiz, or a, a Kahoot quiz in the class. And then at the end of the day, you want to give it to them for homework to revise. You can set the quiz into challenge mode. And when you do that, this is what happens over here. You click on a sign. So now you're not teaching, you're clicking on a sign. And when you do that, you then get to choose when you want the quiz to expire. So it actually has a time and a date when it expires. You can obviously pick a few of these. So if you randomize your answer order, what that will do is take the questions and instead of the kids learning off by heart which answers uh, are placed, let's say, I know the answer is going to be blue for question one. What it does is it swaps the, the answers around so they can't memorize that. And that's a great way to A, revise content that you did in class, and B, let's pretend I set a challenge for my entire fourth grade, all the kids. I send them this link using whichever learning management system I have, whether it be uh, Google Classroom or Teams, and then the kids will know that they have until three o'clock in the afternoon to complete the quiz, and they are competing against all the other students. And as you see, it says player limit is 2,000. I think that is wonderful that you can get more than your fourth graders. You can get a whole school to take part in a fun challenge. And of course, as soon as they start, you can also decide, do you want a timer on or not? And then it will run like a regular quiz. And as soon as they're done, they will see how they fare on the leaderboard, which I think is a wonderful feature. And now, of course, this feature over here is very important to me, and that is the volume feature. Well, you won't see it here because these are slides and there is no side with a sound with the slides. But of course, the volume feature I've been nagging for a long time, and that was sometimes you want to actually turn down the volume of the music in the background because it can be quite annoying if, if it's a thinking question. And sometimes the kids, they actually need to concentrate, but sometimes you want to push the volume up because you want to excite the students and that gives you control to do so. And you'll notice that when you go to the next slide, this is where that little slider will be on the actual slide over there. All right, so now that we've got all of that under, the, under our belt, we're going to move on to actually taking part in our quiz. And this over here is what we call a slide. And, and sometimes we put a slide in a quiz just to break up the sections. Maybe you're doing a general knowledge quiz and this is going to be a section on geography. And of course, you're thinking, well, that's great. I can use it to introduce the section, but what image do I place over here? And I'm glad that you asked because whenever you insert a slide, I want you to notice you don't only have to have a slide in the format that I've shown you. You can also pick a different structure like you would in, in slides, in PowerPoint, in Keynote. You can choose the structure of the slide and then you want to add your image. Quite simply, you go to either upload image or go to image library. Image library are royalty photos, and I'm going to show you what I did. I clicked on image library, I typed in slide, and I clicked on this one over here. It stuck it in, and that's how I was able to create my slide. All right, so now, of course, we get different types of questions. These particular ones are your standard multiple choice questions, and 
Here we go. Our first question. Carol's father has three children. Snap, crackle, and if you know the answer, submit your answers. Let's see how much time you've got. You've got nine seconds left. We've got, and remember, if you don't know the answer, guess. There are prizes at the end of the session. Well, we got 31, 32 answers in, and only eight of you got that correct. Of course, if Carol's father has three children, then Carol must be one of those children. And a lot of you probably thought it was Pop, because you know Snap, Crackle, and Pop, but no, it was indeed Carol. So let's have a look at our leaderboard at the moment. And look at that. We have Sophia, we have Trini teacher, Adita, and we have Muhammad, and of course we have Else. And just know that the score difference is very slight. That means anything can change at any moment. And we'll talk about that during the game as well. Now we're gonna go on to a double pointer. <gasps> a double pointer. This one is certainly going to be very important. You want to get this one right. You've only got 15 seconds left. What is a thousand plus 10 plus a thousand plus 20? Oh boy, these answers are coming in super fast. And of course, you could see the questions and the answers on your device. For those of you who still want to join, remember the pin code is in the chat and Isabella will post it in the chat. It's also on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, so you can join in at any time. 15 of you got this correct. Some of you did not get it correct. You were almost correct. And of course, if you add 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40, you get 100. And if you add 4,000, you will get 4,000. And if you add them together, you get 4,100. And a lot of people think that it's actually 5,000. It is not 5,000 at all. I'm just going to have a look at the chat to see if I'm missing anything. Uh, Isabella, I know you're monitoring the chat as well. Let's have a look. Oh, some of you said it was a tricky question. Oh, it was a bit of a tricky question. Uh, Isabella, you're obviously monitoring this. Anything you need me to know, just um, switch your camera on and wave, and then I'll know that you are calling me. All right. Sounds good. We're now going to go on to our leaderboard. Oh, my word. Look at that. Because I threw in a double pointer, all of a sudden, it created a change in the leaderboard. And that's one of my tips. When you throw in a double pointer every now and again, and you make sure it's not an easy question, then you give all those others who are not featured on the leaderboard a chance to climb and also to appear on that leaderboard. So right now we have Edita, we have Muhammad, we have Sophia, Trini and RC65. Welcome to the top five, but this is not over yet. We still have more questions to go. Our next question is a multi-select question. So instead of just being a regular multiple choice where you get to pick one answer here you can pick more than one answer so here comes your question it is a multi-select and it's a double pointer this is going to get very exciting which of these features will you find in kahoot hmm. challenge mode single screen import slides or mute the background music which of those features can we find in Kahoot? Hmm. I see more answers are coming in and we've got 10 seconds to go. Four seconds. And you will notice that all of those features can be found. If you ticked some of them, then of course you will earn some points. If you ticked all four, you would earn more points, but you will get some points for a, at least one correct answer. So let's have a look at what that did to the leaderboard. Look at this. First of all, Edita is still holding on in first place. We have Sophia coming in second, Susan P up in third, Susie in fourth, and Helios in fifth. But I do want to say that Sophia has an answer streak of three correct in a row. And one thing you should know, is that when you get three or more correct in a row, you score bonus points. 
So watch out because it does say that Sophia is on fire. Sophia, you are doing exceptionally well, but will this help you to take down Edita in the finals? We will find out very soon. Now, of course, another type of question you get is a true or false question. So you only have to pick one you, and you have a choice of two. So let's see if you know this one. I must remind you that if all of you answer the correct answer, that's great. But some of you will earn more points than others because the quicker you answer, the more points you score. So let's have a look. True or false? Kahoot will always be free for teachers. True or false? I can hear the popcorn. When popcorn starts popping, that generally means it's a sign of confidence that people know these answers. We're going up to 55 and we've got five seconds left. You can do this. And 11 of you did not know that Kahoot will always be free for teachers. So now 11 of you are going to be much happier today to know that you're never going to have to pay for Kahoot, the free version, because it is always going to be available for free. Uh, of course, if you want the premium features, then they will be at a very, very small cost, but absolutely worth it when you see the uh, versatility of this tool and how you can use it in your classroom. And notice every time before I even get to the leaderboard, I do chat a little bit, and that helps to build a little bit of the tension, because now you're probably wondering who has made it to the top five. Will Edita be holding on to that top position? Let's find out. And sometimes I get the little ones going and I go, can we get a drum roll, please? We'll start banging on the desk and... Oh my word, Sophia got knocked down to fifth place. We've got six players that have got an answer streak of three, which is outstanding. Edita is still there, but only by a fraction. Susan P is chasing Edita. Susie is chasing Susan. Helios and Sophia, they're in the top five, but that could change with any other question that is a double pointer. And if I put in some sneaky questions, you will see what happens to our leaderboard. Now, of course, I'm going to give two features in one question it is an open question with the reverse thanos effect now some of you are going to say i have played kahoot all my life i have never heard of reverse thanos well this is a story that goes back to isti a couple of years ago when i was traveling to the us and i went to the the, the conference and i got to meet the team and i begged them and i said please can't we have the Thanos or the reverse Thanos effect. And they said, what on earth is that? And if you've ever watched the Avengers movie, you will know in the scene where Thanos does something and things just start disappearing. So the reverse Thanos effect is when things start appearing. So in this particular question, not only are you gonna to have to type in an actual answer, but the image that you're gonna to have to use to get the answer, is going to appear block by block. And that's just going to make it a little bit more challenging. You'll see what I mean. Here comes your type in your answer. You've got a five letter word that you need to make from these four images, but they are only going to come in pieces. I've given you a minute to think about it. So have a look at some of these images. If you think you know what they are trying to tell you, these images all have something in common. You're going to then type in what you think the answer is. And of course, think about this from a language point of view when you are teaching languages. This is a great tool if you are working with kids and you want them to try and work out. Here is a picture of this thing. And how do you type in the word in that language? I see we've got 23 seconds left. We've got 44, 48 answers. They're coming in a little bit quicker. I wonder what those four pictures have in common. Hmm. I see a picture of an appliance. I see people clinking glasses, a bottle with a cork flying out and, and some uh, bread that has been heated slightly. That was a little bit of a clue. And of course, the correct answer is toast. Now you might say, but you don't spell toast T-O-S-T-E. And that is because when you are creating this question, you can put the options of what answers you want to be correct. And some kids, spelling is not their forte. 
So they might feel very upset that the answer is toast. They spelled T-O-S-T-E and they got zero for it, but they knew the answer. So what I do is I put a couple of options in and that just covers those kids whose spelling is not great, but at least they are able to participate in the question. All right, let's have a look at our leaderboard. Whoa, fantastic. Panay has now moved into the top five. We've got Susan P, Susie Helios, and fantastic Panay, but Edita is not letting go. Edita, do you want to type in the chat, where are you from? We'd love to find out where Edita is from. Let's see if we can find out where Edita is from. I'm going to go to chat over here. Edita's from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Welcome, welcome. Uh, yes, the multiple choice answers are great for maths questions. And of course, uh, the, um, uh, the, the multi-select could also be correct uh, for a maths question. So I could ask a question like, um, Z, uh, P times P is equal to four. Uh, how many digits uh, could replace P to make that sentence true? And there might be a couple of options for answers. And of course, if I had drawn a, a, a triangle with an angle of, let's say, 60 degrees, I want to know what kind of angle is it. I would like them to type in the word acute as opposed to obtuse, uh, et cetera. So, so you can definitely use this for mathematics. And don't forget, in the actual text, you can type using the maths type you can use the equations and formulas and numbers like that in the actual questions. I didn't want to make this too mathematical today because I wanted to give people an opportunity to also see it from a language point of view or from a history point of view or a geography point of view. All right, uh, let's have a look. Um, oh, what do I mean? Uh, it says, hi, Diana. I was in a chat with Steve, uh, talked about Thanos. I will ask him what he meant during the Q&A. Uh, does he have an official Thanos or reverse Thanos mode? No. So what happens is when you are creating a question and you insert a photo, you look on the right-hand side of your screen and there are options to make it appear, let's say it breaks it up into nine blocks or 16 blocks, and then the blocks will appear as the question is progressing. So I might ask a question, who is this famous person in history? and the face will appear block by block as opposed to one photograph straight away. And that is called the image reveal. Uh, I call it the reverse Thanos, and I prefer that, but you know, Kahoot can't get everything right. They are, maybe because they can't use Thanos, it's kind of like copyright, but it's still my favorite term for it. And, and when I did propose the idea to them, they said it's a great idea, but they can't call it the reverse Thanos, so they now call it image reveal. All right, let's go on to our next question. This is going to be an interesting one. It is a multiple choice question, but this time there are images instead of words as your answers. So for example, if you're working with the younger grades and you say to them, cat, and you put a picture of a dog, a spider, a mouse, or a cat, then they would have to pick which image actually fits. So let's have a look at this particular question. It is a quiz question, it's a multi-select, there's more than one answer, and it's got pictures in the answers. So which of these characters belong to this particular superhero group listed in the question? Oh, this is a tough one. Maybe it's not so tough. Maybe there are a lot of uh, Marvel superheroes and DC superheroes and would know the difference. We've got six seconds left. Three, two, one. And some of you knew that Daredevil and of course Spider-Man belong to one group and Batman and Aquaman belong to another group. So well done to those of you who knew that. If you didn't know that, you are still in the top 500. So you are doing exceptionally well. Keep going. All right, let's have a look at what it did to our leaderboard. Now look at that. I knew that if I swapped out and put in a question that had a, was a completely different subject, not everyone has strengths in every single field. 
and Helios is now in the top with Fantastic Panay coming in second, JH coming in third, Edita in fourth, and Susan P. Four players have hit an answer streak of four, and that is exceptional. I am very impressed. You are doing so nicely, and of course, it's not over yet. We're now going to do something a little bit different. This is going to be a puzzle question. And a puzzle question is when you get four answers, but they are in a different order. What you need to do is arrange them in the correct order by dragging them into the correct order. And then you have to submit your answer. Don't just drag them into the correct order and then assume that you've submitted. You have to click the submit button. So let's see how well you know your musicians. Arrange these musicians from oldest to youngest. So the left will be the oldest. The right will be the youngest. Let's see how well you know your musicians. It all is, it's actually quite telling of how old you are if you know who some of these people are. And if you don't know who some of these people are, it might tell you that you are of a certain age. Some of us might have had to ask family members who they were. I'm just saying that, I mean, all of us are 21. So we should all know who all these people are. So that's not a problem. I see 43 answers are in. We've got 20 seconds left. You are doing well. If you don't know, you can always guess. And of course, someone asked, are all the features that are being revealed, uh, that are, are all these features free? They are free as far as I know. And Isabella can obviously attest to that. And for those of you that did not know, Paul McCartney is definitely the oldest and Billie Eilish is definitely the youngest. So it really was between these two to fight them out. And I think we can all agree that Chris Martin is definitely older than Zendaya. So there we go. We now have a change in leadership. Fantastic Pinay is now in the top position with JH, Susan P and Deanna. Nice of you to join us. And then, of course, Susie and Edina is not even in the top five. I knew that these things would change. And, of course, we have four players who have reached an answer streak of five. That means they are going to be scoring bonus points. So all is going to get very exciting towards the end because when those bonus points kick in, it's going to shift them up even higher on the board. Let's have a look at the next questions. Oh, boy. So these are going to be your bonus questions. These are the ones that are going to help you to really reach the top and to win those prizes. Are we ready? Let's go. If you overtake the person coming third in the 100 meters, what position would you now be in? Nice and easy. You've got 10 seconds. And 21 of you got that correct. Now, you're probably wondering, what? How is that possible? Well, let's see if I can use this picture to illustrate it. All right. So if you've got these guys running in a race, all right, here is the, per or let's choose these three over here. One, two, three. So if I'm over here and I move and I overtake the person coming third, I am now the new person coming third. So that was a very sneaky question indeed. I do like to keep you on your toes, but I do know that that is going to change the leaderboard. Let's have a look. Oh, wow. JH is sitting on top, but not very far behind. It's Deanna, Susie Helios, and Fantastic Panay, and up 10 places. Karina, you are a high climber. You have climbed up 10 places. That is very impressive. But will it be enough for the next question? Here goes. Oh, if you overtake the person coming last in the 100 meters, what position would you now be in? If you overtake the person coming last in the 100 meters, what position would you now be in?
Some of you are thinking, you know, he asks very tricky questions. I think I need to think about this one. Well, you've got five seconds to do that. And 14 of you got it correct. Uh, a few of you almost got it correct. Uh, the point is that if someone is coming last, that means there is no one behind them. So you cannot overtake the person coming last in the 100 meters because they are last. So the answer is none of these. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't think it's going to reveal the leaderboard just yet because that was the final quiz question. I think it's only going to reveal the leaderboard at the end of the slideshow. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm excited to find out. Let's have a look. Ah, so it's not going to reveal the leaders yet. So I can quickly go through my hot tips. And these are tips that I've used. And I'll explain what all of these things are. Number one, when you are playing or when you are creating a quiz, you need to run through the quiz first. Actually test it on yourself before you go and put in the class, because I'll tell you what happens. When you are like me and you are doing a corporate event, or you are running this in a classroom, or you've got all the parents taking part in an event at home, or it's a fundraiser for your community. If there is a question that is wrong and you are playing for prizes, trust me, you will always find one person who comes along and goes, I'm sorry, I actually got that question right and your answer was wrong on the board and that was your mistake, not mine. And then you have to deal with that. So I always advise you go through your quiz, check it. And if you need to get someone to check it for you, then at least you avoid that particular situation. They say in the building industry, always measure twice and cut once because that's going to save you a lot of money when you are cutting wood and you haven't measured it properly and then you've got to come back and do it again. Number two, I like to add a couple of easier questions. And the reason you do that is to give those kids who are going, you know, I'm not even in the top 20. This is so demoralized. So you want to give them motivation that they can still participate. So every now and again, throw in an easy question. Uh, one of the questions I threw in, in an, an event just recently was, how do you spell Yuri? Because it was for Yuri's night. And I put Y-U-R-I. How do you spell Yuri? And they had to type in the name Yuri. And of course, many of them thought, but he just gave us the answer. This is going to be the easiest. And what they are doing is they're laughing and are getting excited, but they are staying in the game. My concern is to keep them busy and excited and not worry about uh, whether the question was too easy or not. An extra question like that doesn't uh, affect the scores. What you can also do is you can switch off the point system for a question. So when they do the question, it doesn't count for points, but at least they feel like they are answering the question. And then, of course, pause between questions to build excitement and to engage the students. So every now and again, uh, I would normally actually see all the faces of my students instead of doing a webinar. And I would be asking, where are you from? Uh, which question did you find the most challenging? Oh, that is unbelievable. Well, right now you're on the top of the leaderboard. Do you think you're going to be able to stay there until the very end? No pressure whatsoever. They like it when you engage them between questions. And of course, they're going, all right, OK, we finish with a chit chat. Can we go on to the next question? So it's very important that you don't go too long, but you do it just to build a little bit of excitement and to engage your students. I like to add one or two stinkers at the end. And this is about shifting the power balance. What normally happens is you get five or six kids who are always on top and are leading the whole way. And all the kids are going, oh, we know who's going to win. So what you do is you throw in three or four stinkers towards the end that are like literally, there's no ways anyone would know the answer. And it's really a guessing opportunity. And that can completely upset the power balance. And when people start to see the names start changing on the leaderboard, they start to feel like they have a chance. And you'll see that when we were going through the leaderboard, it kept changing all the time. And that's because I put in a sneaky question. I put in a double pointer. And when you start to do that, you start to see the leaderboard shifting. And then, of course, I mentioned the reverse Thanos effect. 
That is actually the image reveal. So when you uh, put on, let's say, a picture, multiple choice question, who is this famous person? And you put Albert Einstein, instead of just having his photograph appear, you can have it appear block by block and randomly. So then they have to wait for all enough pieces to go, oh, I know who that is. And then they hit their answer. Because there is a slight delay, remember, the quicker you input your answer, the more points you score. So, of course, you want to get your answer in early, but you can't just put it in if you don't know who that person is. So it does build excitement in the question. And it was named Reverse Thanos by me, not by Kahoot. They call it Image Reveal. I call it Reverse Thanos because it was something that I nagged them about at ISTE in 2018. And then, of course, what happens when the internet goes down in your classroom? You play South African style. And the way it works is I was at an event. We had, it was supposed to be a maths evening for approximately 45 children that booked at a science uh, festival and 300 arrived. And of course, when 300 arrived, we didn't have enough resources to run the maths evening. So what did I do? I pulled out a Kahoot because I've got so many and I decided let's do a Kahoot for all of them. But of course, there was a big issue. No internet access for all their devices. And not everyone had devices. So then what I did was I played Kahoot using my laptop and Wi-Fi from my phone. And they could see the questions. I then went into the app on the phone and changed the duration of each question. So instead of being 20 seconds, I made it, let's say, a minute. And I'll tell you why I did that. Because all the kids got into teams. So let's pretend there are 10 teams. And each team has got four pieces of paper. One has got blue. One has got green. One has got red. And one has got orange written on those pieces of paper. And what I did was I asked the students to choose one runner from each team. And what would happen is I would put the question, obviously, because there's no one else playing the game, I would have to sign into the game on the app on my phone. So at least we've got one player. And I would put the first question up. And let's say it was, if you're uh, taking part in 100 meters uh, and you overtake the person coming third, which position do you come? And let's pretend they think the answer is blue. Then they would send a runner from their team with the piece of paper written blue. And as soon as the first person gets up to the front of the hall, I start counting down from 10, 9, 8. And that puts pressure on all the other teams. And they're all going to send their runners up with their piece of paper. And when I get to zero, no more runners are allowed. Stay where you are. And then I ask all the students, if you've got yellow, put up your hand. I mean, if you've got orange, put up your hand. And they go, yes, we've got orange. Sorry, you can go sit down. That is not correct. And we start eliminating all the wrong answers until eventually there are just two colors. And I'll say, if you chose red, then you are fortunate enough to know it was not correct. But the blue people, you guys got it right. So any team that brought up blue, they score 10 points. You can make up how many points they get. And you just keep a track of the team's and the points that they were getting. So someone had a whiteboard and they were writing down how many points all the teams got. And at the end of the day, they had a lot of fun running up the countdowns. I actually found that version to be so popular that sometimes we only play that style instead of using the devices because it, it requires no devices other than a board to display the actual questions. And if you have any questions about that, I'm happy to answer that as well. And then the next tip I want to give you is ghost mode. So now let's pretend I go and put in a maths quiz. And I know who the top five are going to be before we even start the quiz. These are the kids that are top of the class. And there are some kids who don't even feature. I mean, their names will never be on the list because they are, they, their maths is not so strong. So what I would do is I would go play the game. And at the end of the game, I would say, that was your warm-up. And now we're going to play it in ghost mode. And when you play again in ghost mode, what happens, and that's a feature when you say play again, 
uh, it brings the old version of you into the game and your new version joins in. So you now have double the number of players, your old version of you and you. And because you've gone through all the questions and you've explained the answers, everyone now knows the answers. So what I find is that when we play it again, A, we get what we call the popcorn effect. And that is when you hear the answers coming in like this. Popcorn. Pop, 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 pop. Because now they know the answer. They are answering it much quicker. B, we also notice that when you look at the leaderboard, none of the top five in the first round have even got a little ghost icon next to it, which basically tells you that the fastest person in the first game is slower than the slowest person on the top five list in this new game. So person number five literally is faster than the winner from that previous game. So what you really are doing is you want to make sure that no ghost icons appear in the top five. And what you are showing is that the, the point difference between number one and number five is going to be tiny because it's really about who can push the button the quickest because they all know the answers and they don't realize that you're actually doing repetition and they are learning. They just think they're playing a game and now everyone has got an equal chance purely because you are playing the same game again and revising all of those answers. And last but not least, I think it's very important to sprinkle your different style of questions within the quiz. Put in a question that it requires one word answer. Put in a question that is multiple choice. Put in one that is multi-select. Use one where photos are in the answers. Uh, use one that is true or false uh, because it, it just brings a dynamic to the game that I think makes it exciting. And finally, when I put up the contact details on the next slide, if any of you have made it to the top three, please take a snapshot of your screen so we can see who you are and you can get in touch with Isabella. Her contact details are over here, Isabella V at kahoot.com. You're going to send her your picture so that we know you were indeed either one, two or three and she will organize prizes for you. And now we get to the part where we reveal who the top three are. If you're not sure that, I'll just take a quick photograph of the screen in case you think it's you and you want to collect your prizes. Let's have a look. Are we ready? Drum roll, please. And in third place, we've got Susie. Well done, Susie. And then we've got Deanna. And in first place, we have got JH. What a surprise, JH. And in fourth, we had Helios. And fifth, we had Fantastic. Well done to all of you. That was outstanding. I'm just curious to know. JH, where are you from? Let's have a look. Where is JH? Who is JH? JH, do you know who you are? I'm just going to mute that one there and go back over here. Are we back in the Zoom? Let me back in the Zoom. Is it better? Do we know who JH is? J, oh, there we go. Hold on. I saw them. I saw J Inc. J Hink Hink. There we go. So now I'm going to go like this. Uh, J Hinkleman. Uh, can we, hold on, I think we can do this. I'm going to try something. Can we go to Jay? Yes. Okay, Jay, you can speak. Hello, Jay. If you want to unmute yourself. Hello. Hello, Jay. How oh. are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you doing? Where, are you, where are you from? Uh, I am, uh, I live in central Indiana. I teach in Anderson, Indiana. And which grades are you working with? Oh, high school, high school. So um, have you found 
Kahoot to be useful in your classroom? Yes, definitely. Um, I teach um, high school math, and especially for my geometry students, it's been really useful because especially things like the multi-select gives me a lot of flexibility in asking them about geometry questions. Absolutely. And of course, you've used the equation editor to create some of your questions, and I think that was quite useful. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely, I have. That's, that's been a great feature. I've loved that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we'll still be, if you want to get in touch with me to chat about some cool math tools as well, you let me know. I'd love to share some of those cool things that I've been playing with on the internet. And then, of course, uh, I must just say, uh, Isabella, there was a slight request there to say, um, what about those runners up in fourth and fifth place? Are they able to get something small as well? <laughs> I'll be generous today. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. Okay. So email. you know who you are. <laughs> Fourth and fifth place. We've, we've taken a snapshot, Charmaine. You make sure that you send us your details. Uh, Amy, 15th is a bit of a stretch, but I like the way you were thinking. To livingmaths.com. We have an S at the end of mathematics. So it's livingmaths.com. You can just send an email to steve at livingmaths.com. And I'd be happy to connect with all of you because obviously, you know, as a global educator, uh, I love connecting with teachers around the world and sharing lots of uh, ideas. And, and one final question was, of course, when those kids sign in, they put nicknames, they don't put their actual names in. <laughs> that is always a tricky one. So depending on the event, I, was, I would always tell the kids to put their initials and then their nickname. So at least we can identify who all those people are. But I'm afraid we have run out of time. I'd like to thank the Kahoot team and Isabella in particular for your generosity, for allowing me to mess with the minds of our Kahooters. And I hope that you're going to go out and do some fun Kahoots with your students. And on that note, I wish you all a super duper pooper scooper day and we will catch up with you very soon. Thank you everyone and bye-bye.